In this video, I will demonstrate a near impossible IV placement in a patient in whom there were very limited options to IV catheterization without resorting to a longer catheters, deeper veins, central venous axis, or ultrasound. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss future Nasora videos. When an IV placement goes easy, everybody looks good. And healthcare professionals indeed walk away with the feeling of a pride of an accomplishment after placing a smooth, successful IV line. It really feels very accomplishing, very good. But unfortunately, medical practice is totally unpredictable. And some patients come with near impossible to secure IV access. A difficult IV access is never pretty. It is always messy. While not really pretty, in this video, I will demonstrate one technique that can save the day in patients who have nearly impossible IV access. This is a 60-year-old woman who presents for left hand surgery. Clearly, we could not place an IV on the left side. However, she also had a history of a breast cancer on the right side with axillary node dissection, and therefore, we could not use that extremity either. In fact, that extremity also had signs of lymphatic stasis, which made the extremity slightly swollen. Our plan on aesthetic was axillary brachial plexus on the left-hand side, and while we were not planning of administering a lot of IV medications, we still needed to have an IV access just in case of something goes unpredictably. As an example, the patient might need an antibiotic or sedation intraoperatively, or in an unlikely scenario of local anesthetic toxicity, we had to have an IV access as well. In the preoperative area before the patient got to us, the nurses had tried already several times to obtain an IV access in her feet without success. And by the time that she presented to us, she's already substantially stressed and she knows that her IV access is always a nightmare, which she communicated to us. I personally oftentimes ask patients for advice. Where's the best site to get an IV or to draw blood? Many patients who require frequent healthcare have a difficult IV access, are very knowledgeable, and can be of huge help. In this case, she had no suggestions. As I examined her lower extremities, I noticed immediately that she was dehydrated, her skin was very dry and extremely hard, just as if she had chronic venous stasis. A quick ultrasound examination revealed several deep veins, but short of central venous axis, nothing was available for an easy seamless cannulation using ultrasound guidance. In fact, ultrasound is not a great tool to cannulate very superficial veins. You really need to have some meat, some tissue for needle travel for ultrasound guidance. And sometimes old school cannulation of the small peripheral vein may be the best convenient and fastest way to accomplish a quick IV access for a short time that you need it. But whichever technique one uses for IV access, there are five tips that are often forgotten. Number one, allow sufficient time for the veins to fill with blood after the application of the tourniquet. Number two, Choose the vein that is formed by two smaller distal veins. Number three, apply vein stabilization maneuver to prevent veins from rolling while avoiding excessive pressure which prevents the veins to fill with blood. Number four, use very small angle of needle insertion to prevent passing of the needle through and through which causes hematoma. And number five, consider bending the needle catheter system to allow you to assume a very low angle of insertion for superficial veins. Let's see now how we can apply these principles to the near impossible vein cannulation video. In this patient, short of a central or deep venous catheter, there was nothing else available but her feet. So the first thing we did in this patient was to sit her up to allow for the gravity to fill the peripheral veins with blood. We then applied a reversed S mark from just above the knee over the popliteal area distally. A diligent turn-by-turn -turn application helps squeeze the blood to the peripheral venous system. Keep in mind that this can be done also in a supine position where the patient can be made semi-sitting perhaps. And here we can see a few peripheral veins that could do the job. Unfortunately, the most suitable vein we found 
was already in the proximity of the previously unsuccessful attempt and belonged to the same venous network on the foot. Ideally, the unsuccessful catheter would have been left in situ. Instead, we had to apply some pressure to the unsuccessful site to prevent bleeding and hematoma formation. And here's how we followed each one of our recommendations. We allowed sufficient time for the veins to fill after the application of the S-mark, which shows the vein that appeared to be formed by two smaller peripheral veins, and we stabilized the vein to prevent it from rolling before inserting the needle into it. We used a very small angle of needle insertion. We bent the needle catheter system to allow for a very low angle of needle insertion, and that also allows you to lift the tip up if you need to, to keep it superficial for very superficial veins, which this was the case. In this case, it was predictable that IV cannula may make it into the vein only partially, but all we needed was a venous axis that works for a couple of hours perioperatively. Likewise, we could have used this axis to obtain a blood specimen if necessary. It's not ideal, but it gets the job done. Of course, for anything that will require longer term IV infusion or higher flow rates or medications that require higher intravenous flow, we would have chosen an ultrasound guided deep vein or central venous access. But we were trying to avoid going big and just getting the job done. Of course, Difficult vein cannulation like this is never pretty, and although I scrubbed my hands thoroughly prior to the procedure, ideally I would have used gloves. Unfortunately, in a difficult eye procedure, gloves may take away the edge of the finger feel, the finger spitzengefühlt, as the Germans would say. I hope you find the information in this video useful, and if so, feel free to post a comment or ask a question in the comment section, and we'll do our best to answer. For example, is this technique still relevant in your practice? And what do you do when faced with near impossible venous access? Greetings, and until next time.